Hello, this is Vern, and today I'm going to share with you six often missed signs that the guy you're into is toxic and not worth dating, so you can avoid a ton of pain and meet your ideal partner much sooner. Hello, this is Vern. Welcome to another edition of VernMendez.com. If you'd like to learn to attract your ideal life partner without the need for gimmicks, manipulation, games, or stupid techniques, make sure to hit the subscribe button right now to be notified of new episodes as they come out. There's two major reasons why you would stop dating a man. The first one is there's a lack of compatibility. That means that you have a different vision for life than he does. You want different things. You have different chemistry, chemistry that's not really clicking, and that's also a lack of compatibility. But there's also a different side of this coin, and that's where beyond the lack of compatibility, it could be a not, not necessarily a good guy. You connect with a guy who has challenges and pain, and he's exhibiting toxic behaviors. And I call it a toxic guy in the headline, but what I really refer to, because I don't think you are your behavior, here's a guy who's, who has problems that he's not dealt with, has not worked through, and is ruining your life as a result of you connecting with him. The problem that takes place when it's not lack of compatibility, because if you don't like someone for some reason, it's clear and specific, and there's respect, but you just, you just don't feel it, or you know that he wants a different life that you want, a different lifestyle, he's in a different life stage, you want children, he doesn't, for example, well, you can say goodbye, and if you do it initially, if you do it at the beginning, it's not super heartbreaking. The problem when you don't have, when you think you have compatibility, but you don't because the guy is toxic with you, then is that you confuse emotional connection for emotional intensity. So you feel this intensity and you feel, well, this must mean that we're really connecting and we're really compatible emotionally. And he might be able to read you properly, he may know how to praise you and how to say good things to you so that you're hooked. But lo and behold, his behavior makes it so painful for you to stay in it that the only thing to do is to get out of the relationship. So my goal for you today is that if you find yourself in one of these very challenging situations, and I'll share why, because the relationships that are toxic tend to become addictive. Not always, but they can become addictive. And that's one of those things where you want to get out of the situation, you want to get out of the relationship, but the way you feel when you're not with that person is horrible. So almost like a heroin addict will continue doing heroin to their death sometimes. You continue connecting with them even though it's destroying you emotionally, it's lowering your self-esteem, it's making you feel crazy sometimes. And you, you start to disassociate from people around you. People don't know what's happening. You start losing weight because you're not even eating. You feel like a mess. You can't concentrate. If that's ever happened to you or if that's happening to you right now, I need you to pay attention. I need you to watch this video because you're going to discover in the six things that I'm sharing, you might find one or more that are relative to what you're going through right now. So again, this is not a Cosmo Magazine questionnaire where you get a specific score and the number of check marks. This is for you to be nuanced and to recognize, well, are these things taking place in my relationship? Is he exhibiting these behaviors? And if so, at what level, right? There's, a, there's different intensities on that. But so addressing them is important. Getting out at some point might be necessary and getting help to get out sometimes is needed. So I want you to be aware that as long as much as I want you to be aware of what to do with this video, you might need to get help to get out of the situation. Last thing I want to say before I get started is you might feel ashamed of expressing what's going on. My only ask is that you become kind with yourself through this process and that you have the courage to say, I don't know how to get out, but I know something needs to change. I know that I need to raise my hand. I know I need to let something else, someone else into my life into this so that I have some perspective, so I have some support. And if you manage to recognize what's taking place right now and take some level of action beyond just staying with the norm, then I'll feel very grateful that you're listening to me right now. The first sign that a guy you're interested in, into or connecting with is toxic for you is that he hides information under the guise that he's not lying. Here's what I mean. There's a downright liar who's telling you that you, he's not doing something that he's actually doing or that he'll do something he has no intention of doing. That's horrible, right? But there's the guy who's going to omit information from you that would be critical in your decision-making process that if you were to have that information clear, you would make a different decision than you're making right now. And when somebody does that consistently, every now and then people might do it out of forgetfulness, out of fear. But if that's a consistent experience where you would have, you may not be with him if you were to be honest and share the truth, then that's a time in your life where you need to recognize that this is lying taking place under a veil of just not sharing enough information. Number two is someone who consistently criticizes you and puts you down. And there's different ways to do this. There's a guy who's blatant enough to say, hey, 
you're ugly, you're fat, you're whatever, which is horrible. Who would say that to another human being, right? Somebody who's hurt inside, somebody who's feeling pain, somebody who has no self-esteem, somebody who feels the need to punch somebody else because they feel so insecure and so shitty inside. So just understand that that's happening, that it's not about you, it's about them, but it still hurts and you st it still shouldn't happen. So when you find somebody who's consistently, co consistently criticizing you, that's a sign of someone who's toxic in your life because your self-esteem, your sense of yourself, your sense of possibilities will significantly decrease. Through time, you'll get less and less confident and less and less secure about yourself. Now, there's other ways that are more subtle that still affect you and still punch you into the stomach and sometimes for longer, right? One is when somebody is passive aggressive. He's not telling you to your face. He's not basically criticizing you to your face, but he's saying little things here and there that make you feel like, oh, that felt icky, but it's almost seamless, so you may not say something about it, but when that's said enough times, there's a sense of resentment or fear or shame that takes place inside that's horrible. Another way of doing it is through backhanded compliments. It's sharing something that seems to be a compliment in a way that punches at the end. And if that's ever happened to you, you recognize the flavor and the essence of that, and that's also really painful. And the worst one, I think, one of the worst ones is through joking. Because that's a humiliation form of criticizing you. He can do that in front of other people, in front of your friends, in front of your family, in front of his friends. He'll basically say a joke that's intent to be hurtful and then he will play it out as if you're too sensitive, you don't get it, you're too uptight, it's not me, it's you, right? When that takes place, that's a sign of emotional manipulation slash hindering on abuse and that's something that should not be taking place. And one of the worst things is when you confront a person like this and he really doubles down on you and says, you know what? It's not me, it's you. The third sign with a toxic person is he consistently cast doubts on your dreams. Listen, it's hard enough to live and do things and make things happen when people support you and lift you up. It's five times or 10 times or 20 times sometimes as hard to do it when the people who are close to you, the people who are supposed to uplift you and, and see the best for you and see a bright future with you and side by side, tell you that you can't do it, doubt you. I need you to understand, just like the previous thing I shared, when somebody can't see it for himself, he won't be able to see it for you. He won't be able to see greatness in you. He won't be able to imagine a brighter future for you when he thinks his future is shit. So understand that when somebody consistently doubts you, you need to get away from this human being because you don't, I mean, you don't have enough energy to make it happen sometimes, but to make it happen and then convince this clown that it's worthwhile and that you can do it, that's too much to ask and shouldn't be happening. Before I go through signs four through six, if you're listening to me right now and you're single or in a very painful relationship, that is almost like being single and you don't understand why, but you know that something's up and it's not just the world, it's not just men. I created a quiz that took me quite a bit of time to put together that can tell you in 60 seconds the number one reason why you're single. All you have to do if you're interested in taking this is you can go to the first link in the description of this video, you will see a page that looks like this, answer a few simple questions and in 60 seconds or so you'll, be, you'll have an answer as to why, the root cause of why you're still single, and better yet, based on your specific challenge, what's the number one thing you can take action on today to reverse it, to turn it around, and to find the connection and attract the man you want. Number four is somebody who cannot control his temper and normalizes his behavior or justifies his behavior, I mean, abuse, disrespect, into, it's justified. Like, uh, you made me angry, so I had to shout, and I, I had no other option but to be very disrespectful to you. I had no other option but to be a dick, so to speak. When somebody has the audacity to, to not take responsibility for his own stuff and not take the, the time that he needs to think about himself and to, and to calm his emotions and his nervous system and to express things to you in a way that are healthy and helpful, that's a sign of, of toxicity. Now, you might be provoking some of this, but you don't deserve this. Here's what I mean, you might be sharing things that this guy reacts strongly to. It's both of your responsibilities to understand how you need to connect, how you need to talk to each other, what it is that you need to hear to be able to have these types of conversations. But when it's blatant and you're really doing your best and it's still happening and it's still happening, then that's a sign of toxicity that needs to be addressed like yesterday. Number five is one of the most painful ones. And one, if you're experiencing this, you need to get out. Like, they're, they're, I mean, some, so, sometimes it's worth stepping in and like, you need to take, at least take a break from this human being. He uses your deepest fears 
your deepest insecurities, your deepest wounds, the deepest things you're confided in him about. You've shared what makes you scared. You make, you've shared what makes you feel sometimes crazy about yourself. And he uses those things to hurt you, to wound you, to tell you that you're less than. When he's upset, he will use that to his advantage. He will use that as a weapon to hurt you and double down and really shake up your world inside out. Why? It's hard enough, again, to deal with those things on your own. Traumas, fears, challenges, childhood experiences, insecurities. But when the person you love most, that you've taken the biggest act of courage and say, here's what makes me fear, here's what makes me shake, he's using that to hurt you, that's a sign that you have nothing to do with this human being right now in its current form. And the last one, which I've shared in a few other videos, but it's worth mentioning here because it's a very big sign of toxicity, is he gaslights you. He, he lies to you, to your face, and then he tells you that you're crazy. He does things, and then, again, even if you're aware of the things he's doing, and then he tells you that it didn't happen, that you're imagining stuff, that, that it's your crazy imagination, that it's your thoughts, that you're, I mean, as I said, extra sensitive, extra weird, that it's, that it's not him, it's you. And, and you start doubting yourself. You start feeling literally crazy because you see something's happening and then he's to your face with no qualms or shakiness. He's basically saying, no, it didn't happen. And he's just lying blatantly to your face to the point where you don't know what reality is. You start losing track of reality. You start losing track of yourself. You start, looking, you losing, tra you start losing track of what's good for you. So if you find yourself in these challenging situations, if you find yourself experiencing one or more of this, especially the strong ones, you need to get some help. Hope this is helpful and useful. If you find it that way and you want to learn the number one reason you're still single, then please go to the first thing in the description and fill up that quiz. In 60 seconds, you'll have your answer right away. If you enjoy the video, click like or thumbs up, Com share a comment, share it with a friend who needs to hear this, please. Uh, if you share this work with people who need it, then it will benefit more human beings than just you. And last but not least, if you need help and hand-holding and you're, you're done just watching stuff and reading books and going to yoga classes and doing inner work and, and, and you want somebody to guide you through this process of understanding yourself and of getting the type of connection and intimacy you want, then second link in the description will allow you to connect with me. And if we're a fit, we'll have a chit chat to see if I can help you. Thank you so much for connecting with me for being courageous to watch this till the end, for allowing me to your heart and to your home. And as always, I challenge you to live a full and a conscious life.